Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. You are of God is the title of this devotion. What a phenomenal gift, blessing, faith, courage, faith and courage similar. To have, to know, I'm of God, I'm on His side. I mean, think about it, if God is for us, who could be against us? Or what about if us before God? Oh, how the Heavenly Father loves it to know that you belong to Him. He rejoices over you with a happy song that you will belong to Him like a father who sees his child born and radiates. I'll never forget seeing my children born and how my heart was overwhelmed with absolute just joy. Pride is not always the right word, even though there is a positiveness about pride. When you would honor, look about something that has been entrusted to you, you feel so honored. And that's maybe a better word than pride. You feel so proud, you know, so honored. And the Heavenly Father is so honored. The Bible says that God longs to be merciful to us so that He may satisfy the love He feels for us. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 or 4. Here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You are of God, the title of this devotion, little children, and have overcome them because He who is in you is greater than he that is in the world. You are of God. In 1 John, we just go back a page to verse 22 and 23, it says, Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son, whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Oh, I find that verse 23 so key that he who has the Son has the Father. He does not have the Son, does not have the Father either. I find it so vital. How do I know I have God? How do I know I am of God? Because I have His Son. That's how I know. I have His Son. Folks, you can say, I'm of God because I hold the Bible. I'm of God because I go to church. I am of God because I pray, because I sing, because I clap or raise my hands. I am of God. And while all of these things are things we do who are of God, that's not what makes you of God. Jesus said in John 5, 37, you search the scriptures for them you think they, you have eternal life, but they, these are they which testify of me, but me you will not receive. You do not have the word living in you. Wow. So you can know all of this and still not be of God. You can pray. Many people in many religions pray earnestly but that doesn't make them of God. What makes me of God is that I have the Son and I acknowledge the Son and I acknowledge the Father in the Son and I live within this glorious reality and I acknowledge my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Oh, how important that is. Remember how Jesus was asked, what is the greatest commandment? And the Lord Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And he says, the second is like the first, love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus shows that you can only show that you truly love God by how you love one another. You cannot say you love God and have ought against others. No, my dear friends. God is love and he who loves is of God, but he who hates his brother is yet in darkness. No, and I know <clears throat> it can be a real trial in our lives when we need the Lord Jesus to come and reveal his love in us to enable us to love like him. 
And John chapter 15, verse 9, Jesus said, As the Father <clears throat> has loved me, I love you. Come and abide in the Father's love with me. And then he says, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved. There is no greater love than this, that you lay down your life for one another. Verse 13 of John 15. So dear friends, it is so important that we know we are of God, not only because we live in a personal relationship with him through Jesus Christ, but because we share that personal relationship with the Father with one another. Listen to this. This is 1 John, and I'll read it here from the Classic Amplified, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 um, and 3. Listen. We are writing about the word of life in him who existed, right, from the beginning, whom we heard whom we have seen with our own eyes, whom we have gazed upon for ourselves and touched with our own hands. We touched him, we touched Jesus. He is the word of life. And the life, an aspect of his being was revealed, made manifest, demonstrated, and we saw as eyewitnesses and testified to and declared to you the life, the eternal life in him who already existed with the Father and who actually was made visible, revealed in to us, his followers. Now listen, what we have seen and ourselves heard, we also are telling you so that you too may realize and enjoy the fellowship as partners and partakers with us. And this fellowship that we have, which is the distinguishing mark of Christians, is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. So, get it here real quick. I'm of God. I have fellowship with my Father through His Son. And it is that fellowship with the Father through the Son that shows I am of God. But you are of God because you have fellowship with the Father through the Son in you. The life, the spirit life of the Son in you is the new life giving way for you to enjoy the life He has in the Father at His right hand. So how can I say I'm of God and not receive you when you have that same fellowship with the Father? Did you see that? So therefore He says here in Romans chapter 15 verse Five. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also has received us to the glory of God. I am of God. What makes me of God? Jesus Christ. But you are of God. What makes you of God? Jesus Christ. Living in you by His Spirit. So we show we are of God, not only through our fellowship with the Father through the Son, but through our fellowship with one another. That is so important in us saying and knowing we know, saying we know God. Because how can I say I know God whom I cannot see when he is in you whom I can see? But I don't receive you. I receive you because of Christ in you. That's what makes us family. His spirit is, makes us one by one spirit. We are baptized into one family, one body, the scripture says in Ephesians 4. So, in closing, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, okay? 2 Corinthians 5.14 The love of my Savior Jesus Christ compels me because I judge thus that if one died for all, then all died. And he died for all that those who live should live no longer for themselves but for him who died for them and rose again. 
Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, although we have known Christ according to the flesh. Yet now we know him thus no longer. We know him living in us, that if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. And oh, I would love to go on and on, but listen, we have a ministry of reconciliation. To me, I love living in that ministry. I love living in that spirit of receiving one another in Christ. You may kind of say to me, yeah, pastor, I hear you, I hear you. It's just the way they acted the way they spoke, the way they didn't call me back, the way they didn't do what they promised, the way, the way, the way, and you are talking about their carnality, their human failings and weaknesses, and we all have them. We don't all, we're not all supposed to keep having them because through the life of Christ, we put away that old nature and through the life of Christ, we receive a new nature. So yes, we're being changed from glory to glory by His Spirit in us, 2 Corinthians 3, 17, 18. And they will grow and mature. But pastor, I mean, it's not yet changed and it's hard to bear. Uh, therefore, the love of Christ compels me not to live to please myself. That's what the love of Christ compels me. Because he says here in verse 19, reconciliation is the ministry that God gives us through Christ in us. What is that reconciliation? That God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, but has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God, for he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. God's love, the love of Christ, will so empower you to release it, to not hold it against others where their weak human nature still puts stress on you and still tries you. And the Lord gives you his love giving power to love them and receive them as he has received them and to become of one mind and with one mouth worship and praise God together. And the love of Christ can enable you to do that, to not impute it, to not hold it against them, but release them. You may say, oh, Pastor, I don't know if I need it. Well, I do, I do, and I think you do too because sometimes folks, unexpectedly, completely unexpectedly, the human nature of somebody else can prick you. Oh, and you didn't expect it. And all of a sudden you feel that upsetness or you feel the inability to cover it and not take an account of it. And it mirrors back in you and then they feel bad and then you feel bad, you made them feel bad. And before you know it, you can have strife together and to then not impute it, not hold it against them. My, the devil would love to employ you and say day and day and day. And, and if you give way to that spirit, then who needs the devil, folks? No, I don't want to know him. I don't want him in me or, uh, or uh, come to me with his thoughts and feelings. I meant never, never, never. I will not give Satan place by, by allowing him to manipulate my thoughts and feelings. But my goodness, that can be tough sometimes, but we can resist him by faith and know that he will flee and sweet mercy and peace will come. And I charge you to take a hold of this because this is what shows we are of God, is that that love of Christ enables us to receive one another, to love one another, to believe for one another, to pray for one another, to uphold one another, and to not hold the charge against anyone, but to love everyone. Amen. Have a good day.